Hi guys, thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Is it going? Yep, it's recording. Okay. Cool. Um, well, hello. Um, so today we're just gonna go over um, some land school air features and how you can use those to maximize OTRs, feedback cycles, to okay student work and um, all of that contributes to teacher agility. So thanks for being with us guys. Um, all right, hit record, did that. Our norms for today are um, to be committed, responsible, respectful, and safe. Um, I am going to ask that you keep your microphones muted. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, please type it in the chat. There is some stuff that I am gonna cover that if you want me to pause there, just let me know, cause I will gladly go over it in more detail. Uh, so this is Canyon's MTSS framework and the specific components of this framework that uh, apply to this PD are feedback cycles, maximizing OTRs and active supervision, which obviously land school is really great for. Um, and our learning intention is that I can utilize land school for OTRs, feedback cycles and showcasing student work. And you'll know you're successful when you can do those things. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to start by just going over some land school features. Uh, there've been some updates and then also, uh, make sure just you're familiar with the features I'm going to reference. Cause that's important for when I go over OTRs, feedback cycles, student work and teacher agility. So, uh, right off the bat, when you sign into land school and start your class. So there's going to be a green button that says start class. Uh, you will see these features. And so I just want to familiarize yourself with this bar so that you know where you can access those different features. So class settings, change the class view, the tile size, push a website out to students, blink their screens, limit web, take a screenshot or share the teacher screen. So the first feature, um, which is class settings, this is actually where you're going to be able to set the settings to blank their screens and limit the web. Um, if you click on that, um, the first thing you'll see is web limiting. You have the option to either create an allow list or a block list. Personally, I prefer the allow list because I think it is a lot easier to come up with the specific websites we will be using in class as opposed to the endless websites that you should not be accessing in class. However, there are times when I prefer to block only, um, and that's often when I have students doing independent research, um, and they might be going to different websites to find information, in which case I'll just block the big ones like YouTube and some of the games that they prefer. Um, if you click on the bottom where it says blank screen, you can adjust what message comes up when you blank screen for students. My go-to is please get back on task because I'll usually blank a student screen if I see that they're straying from uh, what we are doing. And that's just a quick reminder to like, hey, this is your warning. But I've seen people do this for stations too, um, where if you have groups working um, in different stations and maybe it's time to move on, you could push the message to say like, hey guys, like rotate or this group needs to change. So there's a lot of ways you can use link screen feature. Um, change class view will take it from the grid view, which is the standard where you can see just a picture of all of the student screens to tab view where you can see the specific website they're on. It will also show you any tabs that they have open in the background. So you can see this student is doing their iReady and they have Spotify open in the background. I, sorry. I, um, I allow students to have Spotify open while they're doing iReady. So for me, that's okay. But this is also when I can spot that a kid may have quickly switched from a game or something that they shouldn't be doing. It shows you all of the tabs they have in the background. Um, it also lets you close tabs. So if you click on the three dots, you can shut a tab down for a student. 
I like that is kind of a subtle redirect uh, without calling attention to them to the whole class if they're doing if you're on a website you don't want them on. Um, the other thing that you may notice when using the grid view is sometimes you'll see this X that says online, not in browser. And often it is just the students are on the Google homepage. And it, for some reason that doesn't show up. So don't automatically assume that they are on a website they shouldn't be. Um, but if you click on the three dots and you click on desktop view, it will send a prompt to them to share their full screen. And then you can see everything on their desktop, including if they have multiple windows open or tabs, which is also helpful for just monitoring what they're doing. Um, this changes the tile size. When we talk about OTRs, this is one thing that I find really helpful is I'll change the tile size from the default of extra small to make it extra large. And then I can quickly scroll through and I can see what all of the students have on their screen very clearly. Um, so today I did it to check the minutes that they had since we're getting towards the end of the week. But you could also do this if you're doing reading and you want students to um, highlight the main idea or um, you know, a character or a passage. Um, and you could scroll through to see what uh, your students have highlighted. It's a really easy way to see everyone more clearly. Uh, pushing a website out. This, these are the steps from Land School. So you just click on push website. You can push it to all of your students simultaneously or just to the students you select. I find this is a really effective way to limit transition time um, and make sure that everybody is on the right page. Uh, you can also differentiate and send different links out to students. So if you know you want like these six students to work on a specific activity, you can send them to that page and send other students somewhere else. So it's a really easy way to select the students that you want and push a website out. Um, and it saves so much time because you're not waiting for kids to type something in and mess it up multiple times. <laughs> okay, so that was the end of my just overview of the land school features. Do you guys have any questions about just the functionality or features of any of the things on land school? that I will move on. Um, so I wanna talk about opportunities to respond. Um, it has an effect size of 0.76 from Hattie's effect size. This is straight out of our curriculum map. So I find that land school is really effective for OTRs. And that was actually when I started using land school for more than just um, monitoring students was when I realized that I could, I could conduct really effective OTRs. So, um, one example that I have on the right side of the screen, this was just a starter at the beginning of class. Um, it was a little check-in. I asked the students, just tell me one thing that we learned yesterday, trying to get them to recall what we'd done. Um, and then you can see how it comes in in the chat. This is nice because I can keep this anonymous by not having my screen visible to students or I could choose to have my computer or my iPad displayed on the projector and I could share all student responses. Um, and so you have options in how you use that, but I really like this to just get quick uh, responses from students. You can also use the raise your hand feature. This is, students are gonna raise their hand in the same spot that they go to type in the chat. So it's on, their Chromebook in the bottom right hand corner where the land school icon is. Um, and so I do this, um, raise your hand when you have the answer and then I'll use the grid view that we just talked about to check to see if they have the answer on their screen. I can give them the go ahead to move on. Um, I'll also ask them to raise their hand if they don't understand. This is nice because it maintains anonymity. A lot of times if I ask students whole class to raise their hand, if they don't understand or if they have a specific question, students will be a little bit nervous or embarrassed to admit that they might not understand the topic fully. Um, and so this is one way to quickly maintain anonymity. And then when the teacher clicks on the raised hand button, you can lower all hands. So you could do some quick checks um, like raise your hand if you got five for your answer, lower your hand, raise your hand if you got 10 for the answer. 
Um, and so that's really nice feature. Um, and then I, as I mentioned earlier, just using screen, the screen grid view allows all students work to be displayed simultaneously. And um, I'll talk about this in a few slides, but one of the ways that you can make this um, really great for also showcasing student work is having your screen shared on the projector because then you can highlight a student screen um, and talk about their work and then they can also explain what they're doing on their computer without having to get up. So I really enjoy that. Can you guys think of any other ways that you could use Lane School for OTRs that maybe I didn't come up with? It's okay if you don't have any, but I'll check in at the end. Think about it and you might come up with something along the way. <sighs> Um, so yeah, this is an example of showcasing student work. So um, I teach math, and so I have a lot of virtual manipulatives that aren't linked through uh, Nearpod or Pear Deck or Desmos or some of the websites that are designed for the teacher to see student screens. Um, and so that's a really great way that I can showcase student work um, and give feedback on their work using Land School. Some other um, Software that I thought of are like if you're using Kami and you're having students do work through Canvas. Um, if they're doing independent reading and you want to ask students to pause and um, point to a main idea or a source of conflict or an example of something, you could ask them to highlight and scroll through. Um, it's also really great for graphic organizers and interactive notebooks. If you have students uh, curating their own notebooks independently through Google Docs, but you want to be able to highlight how one student has done it, that's a really great way to just pull it up um, and compare multiple students. And then this is an example of my manipulatives that I did. Um, and so the, the key here is if you're hoping to showcase student work using Land School, you need to make sure that the device that you have Land School open on is in some way connected to your projector. The way that I do this is I use Land School Air on my iPad and I have my iPad connected to my Apple TV. And so that also allows for teacher agility, which I'll talk about in a minute, but just being able to move around the room and not being confined to my computer at my desk is really great. Um, so now I wanna talk about feedback cycles, which has a 0.92 very high effect size. Um, and we you can give feedback both for behavior and academics via the different features that I talked about with the chat function. Um, so here is an example uh, where I prompted students to just solve a quick problem. I said, can you tell me what five squared is? Um, and this student said five squared is 10. I was able to respond privately to the student and say, hey, that looks like this is the mistake that you made. Remember, this is how exponents work. And the student had the opportunity to then reflect, try again and get it correct. Super quick. Um, sometimes I will have common mistakes and feedback on a Word doc that I can copy and paste. So if I'm expecting that students might make that mistake, I'll um, write it out and copy it and I can give that feedback to multiple students. Um, this also allows you to push websites to those students. Um, if you have a resource available, that would address their misconception. Um, and then other ways to give feedback cycles are through checking their screens um, and seeing the work that they're doing, physically walking over to them or using that chat function. Obviously, land school is predominantly used for active supervision. So this is one that isn't among on the academic framework from TSS, but behavior is super important to um, effective instruction. And so monitoring student screens, um, like I said, all of these features I've talked about work really well with an iPad. And that allows me to monitor student screens and limit web 
while I'm pulling small groups and I'm physically working with a group of students, I can keep tabs on what students are doing independently on their computers while they should be doing independent work time. I can send them quick, quick chats without having to like get up and walk over. Um, I can blink for screens, remind them to get back on task. So it's a really great tool that allows for more um, individualized instruction while the rest of the class is still on task and hopefully doing their work. Um, and so the last um, component of this, and I think all of these things really bring us back to instructional agility. Um, so I have a template that I've used for planning lessons with land school. So a lot of times if I know that we're doing manipulatives or having to use websites that aren't um, easy for me to monitor student screens with, I'll just create a link uh, for those websites on a Word doc. And then when I need to push those activities out to students, it's super easy to copy and paste. Um, I'll make a little note for myself about when to do chat response OTRs or um, when I'm going to want to use uh, screen view, the screen grid view to just check students work individually. Um, and when I mentioned earlier having resources available to students, that's a really good opportunity while you're lesson planning to think through what's a resource for a student who might not understand this that they could have access to during class time in order to have more access to what we're learning. So I'll just like compile those links. Um, the other thing that's always important when you're going to rely on land school for a lesson or really any lesson that is involving technology, um, I always have land school turned on when I have students on the computers in my room, is just to ensure that I have my block or allowed websites up to date and that my blank screen message aligns with the lesson tasks. Um, I've in the past had a blank screen message that says eyes on the board and I'll blank a student screen because I see them playing a game and they're like, why do my eyes need to be on the board? I'm supposed to be doing a computer activity. So just making sure that like it's updated to align with what you're doing. Um, and then just, I also find that land school is really helpful for those days where um, maybe something else has fallen through or my previous plan didn't work quite as I intended. And then I have this, I'm like, oh, I forgot. Like all of my students are automatically linked to my land school. I can push this website out to them. Um, as some of you may have experienced this week, like our Apple TVs haven't been cooperating a ton with our projectors. Um, and so that's a great way to say, you know what, I don't need to do that because I'm going to share the teacher screen and I'm going to do this on my computer and I'm going to share my screen to you guys and you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So um, you do need to plan. So using land school is not an, an excuse for just, well, I don't need to like have a well-planned lesson today because I'll just be able to push something out on land school. But it is also a great tool for when um, you need to be flexible or change your plans and be able to still seamlessly move through your lesson. So um, I would love to hear from you guys if you've thought of a way that um, you could maybe incorporate some of these features of land school uh, in your classroom to improve OTRs or feedback cycles. I'm especially interested because we have ELA and science and math teachers here. So I know I come from the math background, but there are tons of um, activities that you guys might be doing on the computers that would also benefit from these resources. You get two donuts. <laughs> um, I was going to say, I did not know that I could share my screen using Land School. So I will definitely use that more. And I think that um, using Land School on the iPad versus on my Chromebook or on my computer next to it would be easier, like switching, switching between things. So I will try that out. Awesome. And I, for sharing, oh, sorry, go ahead, Sarah. Okay. Uh, I like the feature of being able to um, send specific students to a website where I need them to go. Um, the lesson plan that I had today was having them watch different videos 
on uh, survivor testimonies of the Holocaust. And so one of the videos wasn't working and a student was struggling with trying to get it to work. And I said, well, let me try this. And I pushed it to him through land school and then it worked. So it, I don't know what is going on with technology this week, but it is helpful to have a plan B or a plan Z because it will um, sometimes help for the lesson to continue moving seamlessly. Definitely. I was just wondering what the learning curve is for a teacher to be able to start implementing this into their classroom. I'm so glad you asked that. It is very easy um, because all of our rosters are synced through Clever. So I know um, some teachers who've been around for a while are used to the classic land school where you needed to load all of your students' usernames. Um, and if you miss, if you got a new student um, and forgot to load them, then they'd just be flying under the radar for a few days before you figured that out. Um, and so the nice thing about land school air specifically is that all of your classes are already there. So when you sign in, um, with your CSD docs email, all of your classes are loaded and you click start class. And every one of those features that I um, showed you at the beginning, they're all there for you to click and go. The only thing I would say is the upfront prep is that limiting web feature. It's just making sure that you've thought through your allow list or block list, because if you click limit web and you have not created that list, it's not going to do anything. Um, and so again, you can go either direction. So you can think about what are all of the websites that I would like my students to access. Um, and you can try to come up with an inclusive list of what they should be on. Um, the alternative approach is you can block YouTube and try to figure out all of the games that kids are playing these days and um, just copy that link, which an advantage of the tab view is I actually enjoy letting my kids kind of play the game for a few minutes. I go to that link and I copy that URL and I have now added to my block list because I know exactly what website they were using. So that's the only kind of upfront, but all of the other features as far as like pushing out websites, sharing a teacher screen, those are automatically there. Another nice thing, Francesca, about the limiting or allowing is if you want to allow them to access the website today, but tomorrow you don't, you don't have to delete it from the list. You just click on the little, the little um, button, the little tab. And so you just click it so that it's off for today, but maybe yeah. let them have access to it again. That's really nice. That's a great point. And I totally forgot to include that in that. So I appreciate that you brought that up. You don't, you don't have to completely remove it. You can just toggle it active or inactive on your list. Yeah. Um, and then I think, was it Emma who mentioned the sharing your screen? Um, I was very pleasantly surprised to find that it worked the same way as like Zoom screen share. So you have the choice of whether you share your whole desktop, one tab or the entire window. Um, and so that's also really nice because then you're not sitting there like, well, let me close out, you know, my grade book or something. You don't want the whole class to see. You can just choose to have students see the one tab that you want to share them with. So it, it's the same feature as the way Zoom works. Cool. Well, thanks guys. Do you have any other questions or comments or things that maybe I forgot to bring up? Cause Sarah, that was a great point. So I'm adding that in here if I do this again. <laughs> another, no. another thing yeah. to um, make sure that people who are seeing this back, um, if a teacher has limited, Francesca, if you have your yeah. first period have limited everything, then they come to me and they're still active in your class. I can pull them into my class. I can start my second period class okay. and they're under my restrictions or lack of restrictions in my class. And so it used to be back when we were just getting land school, it used to be, we didn't have that ability to just pull mm -hmm. them into our class. 
now that we do, I don't have to go bother Francesca or Emma and say, hey, would you please dismiss your fifth period class or your first period class? I just pull them into my class and then they're active under my limitations or lack of limitations. So that's something else that I have learned in the past couple of months that I don't yeah. have to be a teacher. They've also added the feature that when you start your class in the, there's a timer option in the top right hand corner so that if you are a teacher who may forget to release your class often, um, you can set it to end in 45 minutes and then you won't continue to have your students' um, websites blocked. Or a specific so time. That's what I have mine yeah. on. Just each, I go yeah. into each class period and I've just said the time that I want it to dismiss and it dismisses at the bell. Yeah. Do you have to reset that daily or is it just automatic? Mine is automatic because I have it on time. The only um, the only issue that I've had with that feature is that our Friday bell schedule is different. Um, and so it, it's not a huge issue because like um, Sarah mentioned, you can just have another teacher start the class and pull them in. Um, but on our Friday ball schedule is different. And I tried that and then kept forgetting to turn kids off on Fridays at the end of my class. So Heather, did you have something you were gonna add? I was gonna mention the timer in the corner. Oh. That's a new feature that and the pulling kids into your class has come in um, very recently, but it does make it a lot easier not having to go bug someone and say, hey, please, please unlock them. Yeah, last year it was daily for me. Yeah. I'd have to go and ask the previous teacher to dismiss his class, log out, exit the land school class because it was. I, I do enjoy seeing whatever the block screen was though because sometimes kids walk into my class with a blank screen and sometimes it's like super strange and I'm like, I don't understand. Why does the blank screen say like, you know, stand on one foot or something? And it's like, oh, we were doing an activity and that's what the screen was. <laughs> so sometimes I appreciate the creativity of other teachers. I'm like, I didn't think to play Simon Says with a blank screen, but I guess you can. I know some of the um, elementary teachers are actually putting their like Bitmoji on there or an image of them going like this or something like that. So it kind of keeps the kids excited and engaged about it. Oh, that's a good idea. I like that. A little inch. Yeah. Cool. Well, if you guys don't have anything else, um, that's all I have for you. I appreciate the additional perspectives that you guys brought. Um, and I'm excited to see how you use Land School for ways other than just screen monitoring in the future. Thanks, guys. I'll stop sharing now.